Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to do another uh, kind of small uh, segmented uh, garden tour. I've done several of these uh, recently. I think there's like three of them now, just kind of breaking down the garden into more detail. There's been a lot of things added uh, into this landscape in the last uh, 18 months or so. Uh, I'm in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. For those of you who haven't followed the channel uh, thus far, there's a playlist on the channel called New House, and you can go back and see how far this has actually come in a pretty short period of time. Uh, the space we're gonna start with today, uh, there's several screening plants uh, used along uh, a, a chain link fence behind it uh, and a neighbor that's very, very close. Uh, this was the only side of the backyard that I really needed to put larger material in. And so that's the purpose of the plants that you can see uh, behind me. And then it's just kind of layered down uh, to the uh, zoysia sod. Uh, this is a, a sodded space uh, in the backyard. Uh, this uh, zoysia sod goes dormant in the wintertime. Got a few weeds in it uh, in this backyard space that I need to go through and get. This is actually a small enough space that it can actually be hand weeded uh, if, if, I, if I want to. Uh, so let, let's get started. Uh, there are several uh, uh, osmanthus fragrance uh, used. Uh, there, I think there's, th there's three of them. Uh, I've actually got an orange one further back here that'll be in a separate video. But these bloom, uh, have fragrant flowers during the winter time. I'm barely in the area that they're winter hardy. And so once they're established like this, there's not a problem. But initially, you probably want a spring plant Osmanthus fragrance if you're in zone 7. If you're in zone 8, 9, 10, doesn't really matter. Great uh, winter fragrant uh, plant. Uh, this uh, Laura Petalum, which I get probably the most questions of anything on this channel, uh, this one is called Carolina Midnight. It has an almost red flower on it, and there happens to be one flower on it uh, today. This is spring flowering, and then it will repeat flower some in the fall. One of the things I like about this variety is the colors carried uh, throughout the plant. A lot of the purple foliage, um, uh, a lot of the purple foliage lore petalums, there's green in the center of it. This one has the coloration uh, all the way into the oldest growth. Uh, I just recently pruned it. This one can get 15 feet tall if I let it. I'm gonna keep it around eight feet tall. One of my favorite additions to this landscape has been one of the smallest additions. It's this Brigadoon uh, Hypericum or St. John's wort. Uh, it has one flower on it uh, today. Bees absolutely go crazy for St. John's wort in this uh, Brigadoon variety has this incredible gold color and it's this color year round uh, which is really amazing these flowers that have flopped over on top of it are from a hookerella back here uh, called alabama um, alabama sunrise it's kind of a vigorous growing uh, hookerella i've got several uh, encore azaleas in this space one's in a container uh, there's two red ones that's autumn bonfire uh, oh no autumn bonfire is in the container autumn fire is in the ground Autumn Fire is a great dwarf. Uh, and this is Autumn Lily, which is a white. And these typically have some flowers on them um, from spring right through summer. This is a day that they don't, but um, I can see that the Autumn Lily has budded back up. And I think by midsummer it'll be blooming again. Uh, there's a variegated uh, Nandina that's uh, super interesting. This is one of the Nandinas that turns bright red uh, in the winter time. Uh, and then, dur but during the uh, summer months, uh, has a beautiful variegation. Uh, really, really, uh, really, really nice plant. I, when I first put it there, the color was a little off and I didn't, I didn't know if I was gonna keep it or not, but it's, it's turned out really, really nice. Uh, moving uh, over a little bit uh, further into this bed, the, uh, there are a couple uh, agapanthus. This is a dwarf purple variety that's just opening. It's decided to open five flower spikes at one time and lots more to come. A lot of these new agapanthus will uh, repeat bloom during the summer. Hummingbirds love them, bees love them, everything loves them. Uh, this hydrangea, which is kind of past peak uh, now, is called Deer Dolores. It is a remontant variety. It will put on new growth, uh, and it's already started. Behind these flowers, uh, there is new growth coming right there, and it should, should repeat bloom. I don't know if it's old enough to really put on a big show uh, its first year in the ground, but we shall see. There's a container, and I've got um, uh, videos on several of the, uh, the containers that are in the uh, space that were planted this spring. This is a, a soft caress Mahonia. It's a great shade, a uh, great shade evergreen shrub. There's a podocarpus that will be part of the screen. It's raining on me right now. The tree above me is dripping. Uh, this uh, podocarpus is called Mood Ring. 
and it's called mood ring because the new growth changes all kinds of crazy colors right now it's just kind of a pinkish uh, new growth on it uh, but interesting plant it will fill out uh, this entire uh, space uh, behind it is an elysium and this one's called miss scarlet super interesting variety i think this is going to be a big big um, seller in the in, in in horticulture in the next 10 years it is the first elysium i've ever seen where all the flowers are just right on the outside of it so it was flowering a month and a half ago with red flowers and they were all on the outside if you know anything about elysium most of the time the flowers are kind of set a little bit onto the inside of the plant so they're not as showy as we would like um, backing up um, a little bit here uh, there's a uh, a gold wygelia uh, that's in this space and i just cut it back it was kind of a leggy thing it's in a little bit too much shade and so it's always going to stretch on me a little bit but i don't have any choice because if i put this gold wygelia out in my southern um, direct sunlight it would burn so uh, it's gonna it's back here in a little too much shade so it's gonna stretch and I'm gonna cut it occasionally and then the new growth will come out and be um, you know quite quite striking there's a variegated hydrangea paniculata for those of you unfamiliar or familiar with hydrangea paniculata limelight is a hydrangea paniculata my white weddings over here are hydrangea paniculatas um, this is a variegated form have not seen this one bloom in the ground yet it kind of doesn't need to bloom it's got beautiful, beautiful uh, variegation. There's a salvia that came back uh, from last year called Rhythm and Blues. This one's a Zone 8 hardy um, salvia, and I'm in 7B. And so I think but once it came back the first winter, I'm pretty sure that uh, it will continue to. It's got a black calyx. The calyx is the part where the flower attaches to the stem. And that black calyx combined with that purple flower is just amazing. Um, another hummingbird and bee magnet uh i put this uh feeling blue deodore cedar in last year and i had this one in a container way too long and so it had thinned quite a bit it's got a lot of new growth it's obviously fine it's uh uh gonna establish itself well here no problem but temporarily it doesn't look great um, i think it's going to take another year for that thing to really fill back in in front of that salvia and the uh, deodore cedar uh, there are some marigolds planted that I did from seed. These are giant marigolds. Uh, I've got some orange ones and some yellow ones just kind of throughout this garden. I love these giant marigolds. They're so colorful all summer. Uh, just super, super easy. Unfortunately, the rabbits have chewed on a few of them, and um, I'm kind of fighting those. But uh, I, I love the foliage on these and the uh, flowers. And the flowers get bigger and bigger throughout the summer. Uh, beside it is a, a touch of gold holly. Last year, I let something fall over on this and uh, kind of hide it from the sunlight for a while, and it greened up big time. Uh, given sunlight uh, this spring, it has come out beautiful, um, has, and it should be this yellow color uh, year-round. On the front of this bed is some uh, uh, pentas, and they're white, uh, pink, uh, purple uh, combination. Uh, I cut these back a few weeks ago. They're just coming out back out, and they'll be in full bloom the rest of the summer. I'll leave them alone. And there's some, um, uh, some cone flowers here um, that will be kind of a cherry color um, uh, that are planted in these. They should come up a little higher than the pintas eventually and bloom later in the summer. And those will be perennial. So um, slowly but surely, I'll have less annuals than I currently have uh, in this space. Uh, behind uh, those, well, there's actually a couple of white agapanthus that are just getting started. And again, these are varieties that will bloom um, on and off throughout the uh, summer. Uh, behind it is this uh, palm that I put into a container. This is a blue uh, Atlas mountain palm, and you can see the beautiful new blue growth on the top of it. Uh, this one is a kind of a thorny beast. It's got thorny stems, and um, it will bite back a little bit uh, when you're if you mess around with it. It's not quite 100% cold hardy here, so I've, that's the reason it's in that container so that I can keep it mobile in the winter time and make sure I protect it every winter. But I do love this, uh, this palm. Behind it, uh, there are three white wedding hydrangeas back there. They're just starting to show some color. Uh, they'll start that lime green color and then slowly get whiter and whiter and whiter as the, uh, as the season continues and they'll bloom right into the, uh, 
into the fall, super compact growing uh, hydrangea uh, paniculata. Unfortunately, have been slightly covered up by this Grand Cascade uh, butterfly bush. This thing has grown quite a bit more vigorous uh, than I had, um, had anticipated. Flowers are gigantic on this thing. They're just starting to show a little bit of color, but you can see how big a flower spike this is actually going to be when it starts to open up. It's kind of a pinkish, um, pinkish, maybe a little lavender hue to it. Uh, but really a uh, great plant, super vigorous. I've got it too close out here to the bed edge. So when this thing goes dormant this next winter, uh, I'm gonna cut it back and move it further back in the bed so that it has, a, um, so it can get this kind of height on it. Uh, that happens, that happens when we're, when, you know, when we're doing any kind of project like this, something will outgrow the space or it starts growing really quickly and you can kind of tell in the future it's gonna outgrow the space and it's no big deal. I'll pop it out of the ground, I'll move it, uh, no big deal. Uh, just a few more things uh, in, this, uh, in this row. Uh, let's see. I've got some of those uh, real charmer uh, leucanthemums here. Uh, the, these were just planted this spring, just starting to open and show some color. These kind of open a yellowish and then they get whiter as they go, but the center stays yellow on these. They're very vigorous growers. Um, takes a little while to get these established in the ground. They're a little bit, a little bit of a water hog when you first plant them. They were last year as well. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you while I'm talking about them, the ones in full bloom on the other side of the uh, yard. Along the bed edge here, there's some Angelonia, which uh, just one of the best annuals for getting pollinators into the garden and something that will bloom just all summer long. Uh, these can be just cut in half if you want to cut them in half at any point to fill them out. I've cut them once. Um, I'm going to let them grow for a while, let them bloom for a while, and then I may cut them um, again at some point just to make them bigger, better, fuller. Uh, uh, in this, this uh, space, there are three um, autumn sunburst encore zellias in the front and, three, uh, and two autumn starburst uh, behind them. Autumn starburst is pink in the middle, white on the outside. Autumn sunburst um, is also similar, but the white band is much, much smaller on sunburst. Starburst is new uh, this year. What I've shown you in this video is the southwest corner of this um, of this garden. Uh, this is only two tenths of an acre. And uh, so, you know, every space I'm showing is kind of a small space. It's got a lot of, uh, it's got a lot of pieces in it, uh, but they're pretty small spaces. Normally the southwest corner of something would be very, very hot, but there's a giant oak tree up above this uh, space that uh, again, by about three o'clock in the afternoon kind of takes over uh, this space. And I think that's why a lot of these things are super kind of fresh looking. They're full sun loving things, and, but, and they're getting that between you know, nine in the morning and two in the afternoon. They're getting plenty of sunlight and then they're in the shade after that. So they aren't putting up with 15 hours or something of direct sun like they might on other Southwest corners. Uh, this space behind me uh, is maturing very, very quickly. This was the first of the kind of segmented tour videos that I did and I'll link it up here in the corner if you wanna go back and look at this section. This section, as you can see, is quite a bit more colorful and uh, is a little more uh, well-established uh, at this point. Thank you guys for following along with these videos. I'm actually mulching this week and uh, I'll do a, uh, a wider kind of tour uh, once this is mulched. Uh, I think it's going to uh, really look great um, after the ground gets covered this week. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell notification so you're alerted when I upload videos. Thanks for watching.